Hello YouTube! Today we have a review of sorts of this um, Harley Benton PA100 power attenuator. The reason this thing exists is because these things exist. Guitar amplifiers with valves. You, you shouldn't power these on without a speaker or some kind of load connected because if you do that will blow the output valves and more. And also these things don't really sound good unless you turn up the volume all the way. And you might not want to go deaf, you might want to record yourself and not be so loud. And this thing will pretend to be a speaker. Uh, you can also connect an actual speaker and get a slightly quieter sound out. In fact, you get a nice volume knob which allows you to turn the volume down of this thing without affecting the sound too much. It will have some effect because uh, the speaker will sound different if you, if you drive it harder. There's also a line output, so you can record and whatever the hell mic mode is. And the way this thing works is obviously it just has a bunch of resistors inside. And there's a fan that is actually powered by the, by the speaker uh, output. It's powered by the amplifier, just by sound coming in. It only spins when you're uh, playing loud. Also there's a overload light and when I bought this thing I had more questions than answers really. Um, one silly question I still have is when there is a big washer, a big washer and a small washer. It's like this in the product picture too, so <laughs> whatever. Anyway, um, a more important question I had is, we have this speaker output, we have 16 ohm, 8 ohm and 4 ohm connections for uh, the input, which makes sense, you have to match the impedance of your speaker to the amplifier, this one can do all three, um, but it doesn't say what impedance of speaker is expected then. Uh, I couldn't for the life of me figure out how, how they'd compensate for that and uh, actually it turns out they don't. Uh, let me demonstrate. So now to this mess the meter is connected to the 4 ohm input and the uh, output there's a 4 ohm speaker connected and uh, if I turn up Then we the volume, we get this, 2.6 ohms, um, because effectively it's just putting the speaker in parallel with the, uh, with the input. However, if we go to 8 ohms, it ain't so bad, like between Seven and 8.2 is gonna be no problem for any amplifier. The tolerance on speakers is rather, rather big, but I think this might be a problem in some situations and I don't think I'd really recommend using the, the 4 ohm uh, input of this thing if you can avoid it. And the 16 ohms. It's not so happy for some reason, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's my crappy wiring. This appears to be happening with a different cable too. Well, I, I turned the cable around, so this is an entirely different plug. 
have to investigate that. So that one goes between 15 and 11.4. I don't think this is really a concern, but it is a rather dramatic change still. I'd say it sounds about the same like the amplifier with the speaker directly connected, although even if you turn this all the way up, it's quite a bit silenter, uh, silenter, is that a word? Quieter than without this thing between there. For me this is uh, actually quite nice, that means I'm not gonna blow my cheap crappy speaker. This thing claims to handle 100 watts and it seems to do so just fine. I ran it for like an hour or so, uh, playing full blast and uh, it doesn't seem too uh, concerningly warm. It gets lukewarm to the touch, especially on the bottom and it actually smells a bit. But, uh, I don't think I'm gonna waste anyone's time comparing the sound uh, of this thing because uh, other people have done that, and uh, look at the speaker I have. Eight screws later, we're presented with this. One thing worthy of note is that um, actually you can see it from the outside. The blades of this fan are really close to the outside of the case. Uh, to me it seems like they're getting away with it, because this thing doesn't really make noise, but uh, if this thing ever falls, it really is only like half a millimeter or so of space between there, which is kind of cutting it close since this is really quite thin metal, but oh well. Um, what do you expect anyway? This thing is like 66 euros. Uh, this big potential meter is where the money is at. The marking suggests it's 16 ohms and 100 watts. So that's a really beefy potential meter. There's a bunch of resistors. All of these are 50 watt rated. Um, although. Uh, usually these things are 50 watts when they're on a heatsink. Um, all they have is this silly aluminum plate, but the fan is gonna help a whole heck of a lot. There's a version of this without the fan, which I've seen pictures of the internals from. Um, but I hadn't seen this one. Uh, and this is what I'm saying about the, the fan being a bit close to, to the case. I think this will go away when I put it back together, but yeah, <laughs> they could have improved that. And also something I already noticed that is really kind of silly. The line input, they're taking it from the center tap of this potentiometer, so when you turn down the speaker output, you also turn down the line output, which that's not what you want. You want to be able to have this all the way down and have your line input giving you signal. So um, it's an easy fix. We have to move this resistor to where this yellow wire is and I think I'll do that shortly, but first 
I'm gonna draw a schematic so we can uh, have a look at how it works. This is the other side of the board and there's a surprise. They use the 105 Celsius rated capacitor. I'd only expect to see an 85 Celsius one in this kind of cheap thing, but they did good. I don't think it's from a proper brand though. I do not know this logo. There's a voltage regulator for the fan. And a small transformer for this MIG mode, whatever this thing is. I suppose it's like a speaker simulator kind of thing. Here we go, a beautiful schematic. The 4 ohm input we were looking at earlier. Indeed, just goes in parallel with the potentiometer and then 15 ohm, 15 ohm and 15 ohm again, making 4 ohms in total. The two of these are connected to the 16 ohm input, which has this little um, thing that makes connection only if there's nothing inserted. Um, so, when the 16 ohm plug is connected, the, the input goes through these two in parallel, which makes 8 ohms, and then these two in parallel, which makes 8 ohms too. And if nothing's in there, then all of those are in parallel and connected to the 4 ohm input, and then the 8 ohm input is just through another two 8 ohm resistors in parallel. So you can you cannot leave anything in the 16 ohm input, uh, even if you're not using it. Um, you cannot use the other inputs while something is in there, which might be good to know. Um, at any time you're using this. The load is shared across four of these 50 watt resistors, so if you're uh, pumping 100 watts in there, each of them is gonna dissipate 25 watts, so they're derating them uh, yeah, 50%, which is pretty good, that's how it should be done. And as you can see, the line output is connected to the speaker output. Um, and what I want to do is disconnect that resistor over here and connect it over here so it's essentially connected the same way like the big potentiometer for the speaker output and we can always independently control them the level is already dropped because there's a resistor going to the line output potentiometer and then we have this conglomeration, I was wrong about something. This thing is not a regulator, it's just a regular transistor and there's a cute little transistor over here too. And what they're doing is they, um, they're making their own regulator from discrete parts, which is uh, not an unknown thing. Um, and it's all pretty straightforward. We just have a rectifier from um, the input through a 15 ohm resistor. They're all 15 ohm, they're aiming for 16, but this is close enough. And um, it's a value you can actually buy, so that uh, obviously helps them. So, what we have is like. Um, just a Zener shunt regulator with two Zener diodes in series for whatever reason. And we have a pass transistor on that, which is then again driving a TIP 41C pass transistor. That's the big one, that is the cute small one. And that just gives us our uh, output for the fan. I suppose it's 12 volts or something thereabouts. And the Overload light, uh, or whatever they called it, it says full power, but that's just uh, kind of silly. 
um, is just uh, an LED and see his with the resistor and a Zenic diode also, which is uh, connected across ground and the the input to this uh, pass transistor just uh, rectified voltage so so this mic mode thing appears to just be a multipole filter I couldn't be bothered to write the values down because we don't know the capacitor values anyway and yeah if we want to recreate this god help us but I don't think we do um, and after that we have a uh, two back-to-back -back diodes probably just to prevent uh, too high voltage going out in case something goes wrong on the amplifier side or you decide to connect like a 500 watt amplifier there and then we have the transformer to give us a balanced output um, there is um, two resistors to uh, reference the balanced signal to ground so it's quite nice that we are actually getting a balanced output um, that means you can send it over a much longer cable without getting a lot of interference on it um, I think that's about all there is to it look continuity and no continuity I believe that's why we were having trouble with that 16 ohm input and I believe I know why I hope I can show it um, there's this bar that um, connects the grounds of these two but over here all it connects is that little tab that grounds out the, the tip of this uh, connector but the actual ground is over here and it's not connected they're just relying on this case to connect it but it's, it's painted so big surprise I wrapped the wire around there and soldered it now there's a proper connection and if you have one of these I highly recommend you do the same uh, alternatively, maybe you could scrape some of the paint away and get a better connection um, from this connector, but um, this is a rather important connection. If this disconnects, you could ruin your output tubes, or in the worst case, maybe even your output transformer, but um, all of these things are expensive. Uh, you don't want to uh, have them break just because someone forgot to solder something I don't know if I can recommend this thing uh, if you can uh, also check these things out properly because that's really quite a big fail other than that you do get your money for this thing is really quite cheap for what it is the slightly more expensive options don't seem to be any better either so uh, this is what it is I'm happy I got one but uh, I don't know if I can recommend this uh, unless you really know what you're doing because uh, there, there's some fixing to be done oh yeah I had to put some heat shrink for the resistor not to touch the body of this potentiometer and uh, now I should have the line out anytime even if this is quiet this one shouldn't bother the line out at all and now we have 16 ohms reliably uh, oh, at least more reliably than before have I missed something? I think I did miss something but what? Look at this shit. The threaded part is turning right along with the nut. This one isn't moving. The, the rest of the connector isn't moving. 
with the threads are because they're not crimped properly to the rest of this thing. It's just to say this connector is shit. I hope I can get it off. Okay, that wasn't too difficult. Uh, the nut really wasn't on very tight. I just had to hold this on the back with my finger. And when I got it out, this was really loose, but as you can see, it no longer is and it also looks ugly. The recommended solution would be to replace this and I still probably will, but I'm rather impatient, so I found the center punch that fits through there, but this flange matches up quite well with the part of this connector that has to be crimped and I took this whole thing to the vise held it so that this thing couldn't go, go through and gave it a few taps with the hammer probably damaged this thing a bit I don't care uh, and now we have a temporary permanent solution. Uh, hopefully it makes contact. Uh, we'll have to see about that. It was still trouble, so I've decided I hate this type of connector now. And we're going for this one. These are proper. Uh, I've used these a lot before and they never failed me. So we have to resize the hole. So now this will fit. And I don't need to buy a connector and I'll be able to trust this thing. In this case we don't need to desolder anything, I just snipped it out. Let's work. And this is what we have to work with. That's pretty good. I like to make sure that things hold in place with or without solder. Of course we are going to solder it. So now this is going to make a proper connection or we're going to throw it in the trash and forget about it. Perfecto! We fixed it. This one was always fine. Oh, I didn't tighten it though. And I forgot the thing. And this one's fine too. No problem. Alright. It's kind of silly. We have to fix this. It's brand new. And that's what we get for buying cheap, I guess. It's all back together. And... It ought to be better than before. I just realized there might be a legitimate reason for connecting the line out like this. Being that you get the speaker influencing the signal. Um, which is not really something I necessarily want. So. I'll leave it like I did it, but it also begs the question, what's with all this stuff? Uh, I don't have an answer though. Anyway, I think that's it, I'm like done with this video. Um, in conclusion, it's pretty cool if you uh, go ahead and fix it, and otherwise this thing is kind of dangerous and not that well made. Um, It is what it is. I almost forgot. This is what the Harley Benton thing is replacing. A uh, big fat resistor on a wire. And I used to have um, a connector and some resistors on here, but I, I stole those for uh, another purpose. Um, yeah, and this worked, but it kind of like... It liked to melt into my table. I had one of these fail and I have a box with a bunch of them in there I can configure for 4, 8 and 16 ohms but I've searched and searched and I cannot find it. 
This is something I did before I got those big resistors I showed. Um, this can handle like 40 or 50 watts, but only for a short time. It's also very flimsy. It's a rather lousy solution, but it worked for uh, a while. Um, for the future, I plan to build something um, a bit better than that Harley Benton thing. Um, something that can handle more than 100 watts. So, we have a heatsink and a bunch of 100 watt resistors and I'm still thinking and I'm slow at these things but eventually it has to happen because I do run into situations where I need more than 100 watts. For now that's just gonna be like putting one of these in series or parallel with the Harley Benton thing but uh, eventually I might just steal the potential meter from that. And Wrap all of this up in a nice box. Uh, anyway, that's for another time. Hasta la vista, goodbye, tot ziens, and thank you for watching.